Hey, welcome to Film Fury. I'm Victor Lucas. This is my buddy, Johnny Millennium. We're going to do something very special today. We're going to talk about some of our favorite film directors. But before we do that, we have to give a special shout out and a thank you to our pals at the VFS School of Film. All right, we had a lot of fun not too long ago talking about our favorite movies of all time, so we thought we'd follow that up and talk about some of our favorite movie directors of all time. I'm gonna let you start with one of yours, my friend. Wow, this guy is absolutely phenomenal, but he hasn't been phenomenal in the last <laughs> couple of years, and I blame that a little bit on his age, so I, I give him a little bit of a passing grade. He's earned it, he's earned such a good reputation, sure. and that is Ridley Scott. I knew you were gonna say that. Oh, easily, <laughs> Alien, Blade Runner, yep. Black Rain. Even Legend. Legend. Legend, of yeah, course. I is. mean, the, the guy is a legend. Yeah. He's the master of cinematography. He did, he always brags, he did 2,000 TV commercials before he made his first movie, which was The Duelist. Well, and you know what? He got the alien budget. I don't know if you know this. Storyboarding. Yeah, he storyboarded yeah. and had to go back to Fox, and he got the budget increased for it. And it's such a great story, and it's such a, uh, you know, a passion you know, effort to build an iconic film, you know, something oh, that yeah. has resonated forever and has not been replicated, by the way, you know? No, like, no, and he's kind of crushed <laughs> it with Alien Covenant, you know, we don't like that movie no. too much, but the guy in cinematography, yes. I remember there's a scene in Blade Runner yep. where Sean Young walks in for the first time, we're introduced to her character, and he's like, I don't like this. Can we get some like water looking effects on the side of the pillars? And so they had to change the shots. And if you see it now, it looks phenomenal. It was just like little touches like that. And he's been renowned in his early days for doing take after take yes. after take. Like he's 20 a, takes for a little, for a perfectionist. Piece of food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it totally pays off. And I love all of his earlier films. Well, I mean, and, even Matchstick Man was really good. Oh, that was fantastic. And the other, the other one that I think you got to call into here is Thumb and Louise, which I don't yeah. think enough people recognize as one of these iconic seminal things that basically launched Brad Pitt's career yeah. and yeah Ridley Scott was responsible for that that's a, a theme that I think we're going to talk about quite a bit in today's video too is the uh, the versatility of these film directors and I can't talk about versatility without bringing up Martin Scorsese oh who, wonderful right who you are you we all appreciate for the crime dramas the good casino you know casino absolutely uh, you know and also Raging Bull and Mean Streets and things like that but if you also pull into his body of work stuff like Age of Innocence, which stars uh, Winona Ryder and Daniel Day-Lewis, you start to recognize this guy can do anything that he wants to. Martin Scorsese is a is an absolute He's, film savant, and yeah. he can he can play in any playing field you could put in front of him. I, lo I love the guy and the reason why he's always said if you want to make a film you have to be willing to die for it yeah. and he has that kind of level of commitment yes. going into any film and it shows in every single film and he was like a big fan of Stanley Kubrick and that's it. I'm just going to get into Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. I love Stanley Kubrick. He's Another like, perfectionist. A perf oh beyond. Yes. He's like he, was, he has OCD. A an obsessive perfectionist. Yeah. yeah to that pissed everybody off. Everybody <laughs> except for the movie going audience yeah. to watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible if you in his movies, ask Shelley Long yeah. in The Shining. Yeah. He's yelling at her, he, but he's trying to get her worked up as well. He's trying to make her feel uncomfortable and yeah. use the audience feel uncomfortable. And I know you don't really like The Shining. I think it is a genius level, you know, I, film on so many different levels. I'm still analyzing it to this day. Well, I, what I appreciate is absolutely the genius behind the choices in the filmmaking prowess. And I could say the same thing about 2001: A Space Odyssey. I, you know, his movies take the beats and the time and they they let you soak up the atmosphere and I don't know if it was because I sort of grew up in the 80s and grew up on on faster paced stuff I had my Raiders and my Empire and my <laughs> aliens and my Terminators yeah, me too. you know and so when I go back and I check out some of the Kubrick movies yeah. they are a little bit slow for me just like Barry Lyndon that is a movie that is takes pride on yeah. being slow but it's building a steady story and raising some things in the back of your mind that you'll analyze years later. In fact, me and Cam, my wife, I've said, we watched Barry Lyndon a couple of times. We want to see it again this year yes. just to soak it in. It's like he's one of those directors you can go back and see his catalog of work yeah. and get different things every time. Every time I watch The Shining, I take something different away from it. I can tell you what were my favorite Kubrick movies, though. One of them was Full Metal Jacket with uh, Vincent D'Onofrio giving us that uh, seminal performance. <laughs> Absolutely scary and riveting. And, uh, you know, I, I also Matthew Modine. 
who yeah. is, again, back with uh, Stranger Things these days. But that was an amazing war film. It was like two different movies in one. It was Absolutely. like the, the whole boot camp aspect, then throw them into war. Yeah. And I loved it for the, the differences in, in those contrasts. Yes. And I, I thought he pulled it off incredibly well. And I saw it back when it first came out. Yeah. And I was just Riveting, so... Riveting. It, it, Holy, like, that just, drill sergeant in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Gomer Piles is the bumbling soldier. You know, going against the sergeant, it's, it's heartfelt, it's emotional, it's powerful, and then all of a sudden, and we're in a different movie. It's, it's just brilliant stuff. gut-wrenching and haunting, and uh, yeah, he, he was a genius, absolutely, Kubrick. And even though I, I I don't love his movies, like a lot of film oh, interesting. aficionados really, really love his movies, I can certainly appreciate them. The resonance of Kubrick, though, in AI, which was spielberg eyes because yes. Spielberg took over the thing, it also, uh, I think, was an incredible marriage, and it was also a movie that still haunts me when I think about it, especially as I keep reviewing all of these uh, robots on, on EP yeah. content, and we're getting closer and closer to having our very own Haley Joel Osment, you know, in real life. But I, I think when you talk about versatility and sort of torch passing, it, that marriage between you know, the Kubrick sort of high-minded but also accessible sensibility to the very sort of public-facing, uh, very accessible movies of Steven Spielberg, but also that versatility and that maturity. I mean, Spielberg, I think, and I, I think you have to agree with me. Oh. He, he's the greatest of all time, yeah, right? Yeah, well, no, nobody would deny that. And anybody who does, that's insanity. I, it, he's, it, he's amazing. It feels like anybody that would deny that is kind of talking out of their ass, and yeah. they need to go back and research a little more because but, yeah. Spielberg has done every goddamn genre. thing. genre. Everything. Every genre. Jaws, uh, The Duel, yeah. uh, you know, the Close Encounters, Counters, Raiders of the Lost Star, Star, all the Indiana Jones movies. Uh, but also, you know, incredible work in, in things like AI and Minority Report. You know, and I'm, I'm, the I'm, worlds. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm agree with you, yeah. but I would have liked to see Stanley Kubrick's AI, which yeah. he was originally supposed to direct it, yep. he was developing it, and then he kind of passed on the torch when he passed away. Steven Spielberg took it over. got a little more treacly than I think that Kubrick would have done it, for I sure. think Kubrick would have brought something different. Yep. I didn't enjoy Spielberg's version. I yep. thought it was a downer movie. It was downer, and, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure the original but was But Kubrick's be, would have been, too. It would have been, it's but it would have been It's scary to think Kubrick about film. replacing ourselves with robots. It was, a, it was a Steven Spielberg version of Kubrick, and it was cool, yes. but it wasn't a Kubrick movie. Agreed. But then Spielberg also goes off and does Saving Private Ryan, and he does you know yeah. Lincoln, and all, Schindler's of the, List. and all of these movies that have so much resonance and weight now he's got ready player one coming out which is kind of like <laughs> yeah. a movie that was influenced by him made by him to honor what he made yeah which to, to us <laughs> who enjoy it to for us to enjoy yeah it's like yeah, meta it's all over the damn place yeah. but yes yeah, spielberg is the goat man yeah he, he oh, absolutely without, without a doubt uh, another one I, I got another person i want to mention yes john carpenter uh-huh i love it i wish he would quit smoking yeah because he's looking really bad now <laughs> he actually looks like david lopan now which is actually bizarre well you know from escape from new york to the thing incredible guy oh just too many yeah. amazing works that he pulled off uh, well and so almost single-handedly like a force of nature like wills these things into shape into being he's made some mistakes like ghost of mars was yeah, not good that was too but hot. but he does the soundtracks for his films halloween yeah amazing right yeah. just an incredible filmmaker i, I love that i love his soundtracks his personal big trouble in little china absolutely gotta wonderful yeah. and i also got to say a lot of the same things about uh, robert rodriguez as well a yeah, guy that great. that started with uh, you know a thirty-five thousand dollar budget El on mariachi. El mariachi and then yeah. Dis the desperado and uh you know he's Once done time the spy in kids and i think a filmmaker that hasn't really hit his full potential with some of the choices that he's done well no he actually might in the future he's doing battle angel which james cameron's had the rights to the japanese uh, manga comic yeah and so he's gonna take it on he's got the budget they're gonna start i think they're in pre-production right now i just love the guy i just yeah, he's I, great. I i love his uh you know his devil may care kind of let's build a, a studio in austin and let's just make these movies the way i want to make them they're not all wonderful i mean i really love the machete movies which are oh, ridiculous I like the machete. they're so they're stupid st and fun right but, yeah but i just just like that the guy's got the guts to go ahead and do these kinds of genre, you know, sort of pulpy movies like Sin this. Sin City. Yeah, look at the Sin look City. At, look Absolutely. at what he did with Sin City. Absolutely. Sin City 2 is a mishap, but he didn't direct it. I think yeah. uh, Frank Miller directed that one. Yeah. But anyways, that that is a bad one. Sin City, the first one, what a look. And he yeah. did that all in a green screen. Yes. But he pulled off the look of the comic book perfectly. Yeah. And I really like it that he's such an independent filmmaker yeah. that made it big in Hollywood, writing his own stuff, directing it, writing the music. He's a pure talent. He's fantastic. Now, 
Now, another one of my favorite directors, I don't know if he's on your list, but this is, you talk about versatility and lots of diverse ideas in here. This is the director of movies like Go and Swingers and Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the original Jason Bourne, the Bourne Identity. Yeah. Uh, this is Doug Lyman, and he did Edge of Tomorrow recently. He's going to be back with Tom Cruise to do Edge of Tomorrow, Tomorrow too. too. And this is a guy that you, whatever genre you throw him into, whatever kinds of things you want directed, he can do it, and he can pull it off with style and panache. And I love seeing that in the directors of today, you know, yes. like Steve Soderbergh is actually really solid that way and has a lot of diverse kind of choices out there. Of course, the Coen brothers are also another oh, they're huge. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Love those guys. Love those guys. And the king of the kings to me, the yeah. king of the world, yeah. James Cameron. <laughs> There's not many idols. I don't have that many heroes. Yeah. James Cameron is a hero oh, to yeah. me. Yeah. He really is. If I could meet anybody in this world, it would be James Cameron. I mean, he's done so many iconic films. Terminator, Terminator 2, yeah. The Abyss. Yes. yes. The Abyss is the one that really puts Cameron on the list for me because that was obviously a labor of love. Oh, yes. And the other ones were methodical, uh, you know, perfectly crafted masterpieces. Yes. But the Abyss, because it maybe wasn't so perfect, there were some rough edges to it, but it's such a cool concept, such a great movie. And if you guys want to see something really cool, you got to watch the Abyss making of documentary that yeah. is in the Abyss DVD. Maybe it'll be on the Blu-ray when they eventually uh, release that. It's a one hour. Have you seen that? Yes, I have. It is one of the most incredible yeah. documentaries I have ever seen on the making of a movie. James Cameron was insane on this movie. He pushed people to the limits yes. where they were crying on set and yeah. couldn't do it I mean, he's anymore. uncompromising, and, and maybe that's you know one of the commonalities with between all of these directors is that they're all a little bit kind of crazy. The, you know what though? James Cameron said he used to be a lot crazier and a lot harsher <laughs> when he was younger. He's mellowed out now. Yeah. He, he, during Titanic, people were like, oh my God, this guy is a maniac. There's and another movie. That, you know, there's another small movie yeah. called uh, Avatar. Yeah. you have heard of that. <laughs> He's only making four more or something like that. Yeah, and we'll see. I just read something about Josh Brolin turning him down and then uh, to be in the Avatar what? sequels and then James Cameron just got all up in his face and was swearing at him and yelling at oh, him. Oh my God. So that's interesting. I'm I'm very curious, as I'm sure all of you are about, and I'm sure you are, about oh, yeah. what, where we go with these Avatar films. I'm still super jazzed. I can't wait. I loved Avatar yeah, we're, when we're, it came we're out. two people that really enjoyed yeah, it. You've got, a, you've got a really good story about Avatar. Well, you say that yeah, way. Avatar was a movie that EP actually presented in Vancouver. We were on the uh, the ticket stubs. It was the first time that Electric Playground was on the ticket stubs so that people got the free movie passes to go and see an early screening of the film. Electric Playground was one of the presents. And we all walked out of that theater, and don't deny it, it. Everybody out there that wants to be cynical right now, you took off your 3D glasses and went, holy shit, what I did I just my, see? What changed was, my life, it was honestly, incredible. it was amazing. Yeah. Like that first time when they were coming out of the cryopods, yeah. and it, the 3D is so intense. I was with a girl in the theater, and she's like, oh my God. Yeah, you can't and I remember it. walking out with my friends, and we saw the midnight showing of it, and this girl, this younger girl who came to see it with us, she said, Oh, this must have been what it was like to see Star Wars. Yeah. And it was. It, it was. was. So, it was it, a 3D. You it was transformative. Yeah, you can hate the movie for some of the story elements and all that. Yep. I, I didn't hate it for any of those Me reasons. Me neither. I no, mean, you, he that. wanted to build a story that we could all comprehend in this incomprehensible environment. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is that it was so good, 3D hasn't been able to even come close to that since. I know. And it's slowly dying until maybe Avatar maybe he, 2. Until he kicks it in. Yeah. And there's going to be like an Avatar world, a Disneyland now. It's getting crazy. Yeah. 100%. We'll, we'll, yeah we'll see where this goes. I mean, lots of incredible directors, but we agree, Spielberg, greatest of all number, time. Number one. Oh, man, that's cold. And hey, if you'd like to learn how to be one of the best film directors of all time, you can start to do that with the one-year program at the VFS School of Film. Go to vfs.edu for more info.